Well, Wolf, uh, he had words of praise for General Petraeus personally for his uh, long and accomplished career, uh, and he wouldn't pass judgment on uh, the general or on uh, what he called his uh, personal uh, situation. Um, the president also avoided essentially answering questions about why he wasn't told sooner. He said that the FBI has a protocol uh, and that protocol was followed. Uh, he wouldn't reveal whether he was shocked or disgusted or horrified to learn the news. Um, he just didn't get emotional on the topic and he wouldn't go there when prodded. Um, the bottom line on this is the president uh, used every opportunity he could to say that there is an ongoing investigation and deferred this topic uh, to the FBI and the Department of Defense's inspector generals. Those are the two areas, uh, the DOJ and DOD, where the investigations are ongoing. Um, well, this is the first time the president has been asked about uh, these I issues, but as uh, more details come out, I'm certain it won't be the last. Certainly won't be the last. All right, Jessica, thanks very much. We have much more on this part of the story coming up. New information coming in on the entire Petraeus investigation. But right now, let's go to the angry political fight that's unfolding between the president and Republican Senators John McCain and Lindsey Graham. It began to escalate earlier this morning when the senators vowed to stand in the way of the uh, president uh, if, if he goes ahead and nominates the United Nations Ambassador Susan Rice to replace Hillary Clinton as Secretary of State. McCain and Graham are scathing in their criticism of Ambassador Rice's early remarks about the deadly attack on the U.S. diplomats in Benghazi, Libya. This is about the role she played around four dead Americans when it seems to be that the story coming out of the administration, and she's the point person, is so disconnected to reality, I don't trust her. And the reason I don't trust her is because I think she knew better, and if she didn't know better, she shouldn't be the voice of America. Somebody has got to start paying a price around this place. Let's see what, what happens here, but we will do whatever's necessary to block the <clears throat> nomination uh, that's within our power as far as Susan Rice is concerned. I right, listened to the president's very, very angry response to Senators McCain and Graham during that White House news conference. She made an appearance at the request of the White House, in which she gave her best understanding of the intelligence that had been provided to her. If Senator McCain and Senator Graham and others want to go after somebody, they should go after me. And I'm happy to have that discussion with them. But for them to go after the UN ambassador, who had nothing to do with Benghazi and was simply making a presentation based on intelligence that she had received and to, to besmirch her reputation is outrageous. Let's bring in our senior congressional correspondent, Dana Bash. Dana, Senators McCain and Graham, they are now firing back at what we just heard the president say. That's right. In fact, Senator McCain did so on the Senate floor. He was going to the Senate floor already, Wolf, uh, to formally introduce a resolution for a special or select committee for Congress to investigate all of the unanswered questions relating to the attack in Libya. But he made a point while he was on the floor, again, continuing in a very angry tone, as we've seen from all of these men, to respond to that comment from the president. He said not to, quote, pick on... Uh, his ambassador to the United Nations to, quote, pick on him. Uh, that statement is really remarkable in that if the president thinks that we are picking on people, he really does not have any idea of how serious this issue is. I'm a United States senator. Senator from New Hampshire is. We have our obligations. We have our duties representing the people that sent us here. And we're not picking on anybody. And I doubt if the families of these brave Americans who were murdered would believe that we are, quote, picking on anyone, that when we are trying to find out the facts, the American people deserve to know the facts. 
Now, that was uh, John McCain on the Senate floor, maybe about an hour after the president spoke, but minutes after the president was uh, done, Lindsey Graham, who the president was also talking about, released a, a statement quite, quite unlike anything I've actually seen before, Wolf, and I'll read you part of it. He said, Mr. President, don't think for one minute I don't hold you ultimately responsible for Benghazi. I think you failed as commander in chief before, during, and after the attack. He went on to say, given what I know now, I have no intention of promoting anyone who is up to their eyeballs at the Benghazi debacle. And there, of course, he is talking about the potential for the president to nominate the current ambassador uh, to the U.N., Susan Rice, to be secretary of state. Look, I mean, there is no question there is deep-seated animosity uh, between these two camps uh, leading, go going back to 2008 when the president and John McCain were running against each other. But it is escalated to a whole new level uh, now. And, and yes, it is true that uh, John McCain and others are, are, going, are going after this, saying that they want questions, but there is a lot of politics going on on both sides of this. If he decides to go ahead and nominate Susan Rice to be the next Secretary of State, uh, Dana, what are the chances that uh, she will be confirmed by the United States Senate? I think it's actually too early to answer that question, honestly. Uh, you know, clearly the Democrats do have uh, a substantial majority, but not a 60-vote majority needed to break a filibuster. They would need at least a handful of Republicans to, to vote with them to confirm Susan Rice if she is, in fact, nominated to be Secretary of State. And given the way that this has become so politically polarized, led by the president's former opponent, John McCain, it is too early to see to tell whether or not that would actually happen. But uh, Jessica mentioned this on the year before, you, you got to wonder whether or not, even if the president wasn't planning on nominating Susan Rice before, whether he just wants to do it now to show that he's not going to back down to these uh, two Republican men, uh, John McCain and Lindsey Graham. Because if he doesn't nominate her, it looked like he, it, it will look to some at least like he has exactly. blinked. All right, Dana, thanks very much. Uh, the president's news conference is certainly giving all of us a taste of his political strategy in the weeks and months ahead as he deals with all sorts of major challenges, including the Petraeus scandal. Let's bring in our chief political analyst, Gloria Borger. Uh, Gloria, it was the first question to the uh, president of the news conference today on the Petraeus scandal, whether he should have been told about it, wasn't told about it. Listen to his carefully phrased answer. I have no evidence at this point, from what I've seen, that uh, classified information uh, was uh, disclosed that in any way would have uh, had a negative impact on our national security. The FBI has its own protocols in terms of how they proceed. Uh, and uh, you know, I'm going to let uh, Director Mueller uh, and others examine those protocols and uh, make some statements uh, to the public generally. Very cautious in his Very. comments. Well, he had to be Wolf. And notice the caveats. This was a completely caveated statement. I have no evidence at this point, which means, of course, that there is an ongoing investigation that he wasn't about to comment on. But um, he also made a point that I think is very valid. A lot of people are talking about it. He said, quote, one of the challenges here is we're not supposed to meddle in criminal investigations. So he says there are protocols. If this is an ongoing criminal investigation, should it go up the chain of command to the President of the United States if it's not a matter of national security? Ironically, if it had been a clear-cut matter of national security, then it would have gone up the chain of command. So far, we know that uh, the Director of National Intelligence, James Clapper, was informed about it late in the game, I would have to say. What we don't know, for example, is did the White House counsel know about this? Was the White House counsel already informed but decided not to tell the president. We just don't know the answers to these questions. I assume they're going to come out when uh, the FBI is uh, questioned uh, and the Justice Department is questioned by the intelligence committees. I assume they will as well. In right. the meantime, the other big issue, the fiscal cliff, uh, the president's got leverage now that he's been reelected by the Electoral okay. College pretty <laughs> decisively. Uh, how's mm -hmm. he going to play that? Well, he behaved and sounded like a man today who had a lot more leverage now than he did uh, before the election, and obviously he got he got reelected. But one thing he said that was interesting to me was he was kind of calling the Republican bluff here. Wolf, he said, "Okay, let's just all get together and do something that everybody agrees we should do, which is extend the tax cuts for the middle class." As you recall, Republicans don't want to do that because then they lose their leverage when it comes to the tax cuts uh, for the wealthy. What you do about those? And the president is sort of saying, "Okay." Everybody wants those extended. You saw the results of the election. You read the exit polls. You know, we need to do that first. So he's kind of trying to 
put the Republicans uh, in a spot saying, okay, rational people, reasonable people, we all know we need to do that. And then as the second part of the process, let's take a look at those, at those larger issues. And he didn't draw a line in the sand, Wolf, about that top rate. He has said he wants to raise it to the rate of the Clinton years, 39.6%. But we didn't hear any number out of him today. We saw a little different president of the United States today than we used to see. I do. I think that we saw somebody who's clearly feeling like I've got the upper hand here. Take a, take a listen to this. I'm more than familiar with all the literature about presidential overreach in second terms. Uh, we are very cautious about that. Uh, on the other hand, uh, I didn't get reelected just to uh, bask in re-election. I got elected to do work on behalf of uh, American families. He's very clear, very confident. He's got enough work on his plate. He's got the fiscal cliff. He's got immigration reform, probably even tax reform. I think that's that's enough to get him started. What do you think? Major national security <laughs> issues as well. And, and, this is and those are the unexpected things that pop up in a second right. term. He right? never has to worry about getting reelected, but he does have to worry about his legacy uh, down the road. Absolutely. All right, Gloria, thank you. Uh, there are more questions right now emerging about Jim uh, Jill Kelly, uh, one of the key figures in the scandal involving David Petraeus and General John Allen. We're taking a closer look into the Tampa socialites' claim she deserves diplomatic protection, a claim she made in this 911 call. I'm an honorary consul general, so I have inviolability, so um, I should, they should not be able to talk my property.